Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. And uh, just checking out uh, one of the miners out here. I just had to actually print like four or five more of these. Uh, if you look at the compass up top there, uh, everything from G to C is a miner. And I've got two of them set up on this uh, one 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 percent deposit here. Uh, I'm trying to get the cobalt. But this one's the only one that's actually giving me cobalt right now. Uh, silver is a bit of a thing too. Uh, I might have to move the other ones. Uh, that's definitely where this is going to come in handy. These things. Uh, the best thing is, is this one here. Uh, it's right there. I can move it over there. I think either there or there will be far enough to get onto another deposit. Uh, if I want, I can bring all five or six of them. Put one over there. One over there. Uh, might be able to still get something out of there and so on and so forth. I love this little dirt patch here. Just minimal, but I remember, was it the first season? I ended up setting up like 24 miners on that spot. I didn't have to go anywhere for resources. I had everything I needed. Uh, but now they have the ore depletion. I, I know I can turn it off, but it's there. I see this is giving me nothing but iron. Uh, the other ones, they're just doing straight up iron, 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 you guys. I need a lot of iron. But I want to get a bit of a build going on today. And uh, what it's going to be, it's sort of, uh, sort of a variation of the loader that I had for the, the hover train that I built. What was it, season two? You know, the one you can see in the main menu of the screen there. Or the main menu of the game, sorry. Uh, where's the other ones? Yeah, as you can see, I got them dotted around the, the area here. I got one over here, but uh, 150 kilometers, 150 meters this way. And it's just right there. Really easy to fly to. Uh, it was suggested that I could get more speed by having it nose down. This one is actually, as you can tell by the weight at the front, sits down a little bit in the front. Okay, so it's probably three or four degrees uh, pitch down, 54 kilometers an hour, max speed. So it's not the greatest actually while I'm here. Let's go across my iron. See how this one's been doing. This one hasn't been doing all that great. I think it's getting too much shade from the trees. I'm trying to figure out which way the sun's going. It's kind of hard to tell. But yeah, that's what that's for. That was just a, a test. I wanted to see if that was actually a thing. And it, it is, but it's minor. I think I remember somewhere about uh, being in the forums about that it got nerfed. That they, they lowered the speed limit because people were driving faster than the game could actually run into the terrain. So people were flying in the mountains before the mountain even drew. And yeah, so they were having issues. Now for today's build, I might actually have to sacrifice that thing. Uh, what I've done too is uh, put the slopes back on the roof, and I'm pretty sure that's what was causing them. That it should work. It was just the, the sides there that was causing the binding, because it seems to open up fine, no problem. And get in here, change view, get out of the camera or cockpit. Yeah, and it closes fine. So it's not actually clipping there. What it was, is, uh, the slope, even though. It wasn't actually touching there. It still has a square hitbox, so it was sort of clipping. But anyways, let's go see what I have here. Uh, I plan on building a lifter that's going to be built lifting heavy containers. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and see that eight's going to be enough to do it. I might have, like I said, I might have to dismantle that thing. Uh, the little green wonder flyer I built. All right, yeah, I was making some of those. I gotta make more of those which are being produced. And I also have to build a second container because I'm gonna use that one with the uh, conveyor connectors. Yes, uh, which ones are they here? Let me get my hotbar ready. Okay, I am back and I have everything on me. I should and hopefully it's not gonna rain this morning. You know it will, but it's always hope, right? But anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to first hit the right button to bring up the the block guide, yes. And we're going to get my handy dandy jack tool out. 
Now, I've been thinking about the design. I want to try to keep the flyer itself compact, but at the same time, uh, make sure that it's actually going to be able to lift the load. And I'm hoping that eight air blades can be enough to lift one of those containers because we don't have to worry about inventory weight. So, um, the hook itself, and I'll actually, uh, we'll have to actually place the container on the ground first. And I will actually do that right now. Let's build a container because I want to show you the, the hook that I'm going to be using for it. So that's going to be number five. That's not number five. That's number five. What color should we make this one? Because this is going to be a biomass container anyways, because I do have to get one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a biomass. Unfortunately, once you put the, the hooks on here, there's more. it's more than just one block. It's actually a grid. So we won't be able to move it with the mover tool. So then uh, we are going to, of course, put a handle on here. We're going to try to get it kind of decorative. Now I've checked the measurement. The measure of the container is 5 wide and 12 long. So if I put a handle on it, it's going to end up being uh, 10 blocks on the inside. Uh, I won't be able to have the hooks spaced to 10 blocks just because of the fact they're going to end up binding. So it's going to be 9 blocks uh, from one hook to the other. So it's going to be 9 blocks taking up 10 block space, which means should be no clipping. Should be. <laughs> but th this is the handle. Let me finish this up. Okay, now for the flyer and the rain, of course. Uh, I'm thinking about doing this one orange, just because, right? It's machinery. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to be starting. Uh, we're going to be plate starting with the frame where the hooks are going to be. Now, the hooks are going to be using, of course, the rotors. Uh, am I going to be t high enough here on this? Uh, probably not. If, if you're ever unsure, don't question yourself. Just go for it. Because you never know, right? So that just means I gotta extend this up a little bit more. We'll do that. And it doesn't matter if it drops to the ground because we don't have block damage. That's actually a little high. Uh, come on. Sometimes that key doesn't right register. We'll uh, lower this down a little bit. I sort of have an idea of how it's gonna look. So we're gonna go back to here. That's not the block I want. Of course, it's not actually the hotkey I want. So it's going to be starting here, and this is where every, all the everything's going to be basically connected. It's going to be the frame, and then it's going to come down. It's going to have to come down two. It'll have to be a three-block gap. No, nope, five. And the reason being, as soon as I clean up my mess here, there's going to be rotors on the other side here, as you can tell by the hot bar. So there's going to be a rotor on this side, and there's going to be a rotor on this side. And then on each rotor, there's going to be like a claw. So it's going to be a block there, there's going to be a gap, another block here, and then a rotor. So then we're going to have to put another block here, and that. So then we'll have the rotor on this side, like that. One block there, one block there with the gap to avoid binding. And then another rotor on this side. And then what I'll do is it'll give us... That's actually more than nine blocks. Hmm. Let me think about this for a sec. Okay, I figured it out. See, this is what happens when, you, when you're not prepared for things. Uh, I'm going to have to go with three, blo uh, three claws like my original idea. Basically, one's going to be on this side. The other two are going to be on the other on the other side, and it's going to sort of basically be like a three finger grab. It's going to grab the handle and go from there. Uh, I forgot, didn't actually mean to fill that in because we're not actually going to need that. So now we can go ahead and fill this in and that in, and uh, I think about it. I don't actually need these two blocks here. Uh, this is hard for me to say, but I actually need to save my resources on this thing. I know it's kind of kind of hard to believe seeing who's who it's who we're talking about here all right let's flip this over and uh yeah i was thinking about having this right smack dab in the middle but i want to have a small deuterium generator on here as well so maybe we'll 
We'll have a forward one block. Okay, like this. Yeah, like that. And then we'll put a Jenny on the back. That's not a generator. That is. Like so. Well, so far, I haven't run out of parts. Now, this is where the terminal comes in handy because it means we're actually going to be able to configure everything. That's why I have it on the hotbar. Uh, that's also why I can't do any building in creative for the time being because we haven't got. There's my switchboard. Uh, we can't actually access inventories while you're in creative. And in order to use the switchboard, you have to be in creative. So now for the arms, or the, the wings, the air blades, the things that lift the thing off the ground, make us fly. Uh, it's just going to be basically something like that. I'm going to get the, the rigging up. It's going to be air blades. Oh, yeah, I did want to put legs on this, too. I actually forgot about that. Uh, sort of... Actually, no, what? We'll leave it like that. Uh, let me... Let me fix this up and I'll bring you back for it. Okay, so there's the body of the main frame, or the the main frame of the fire body thing, or whatever we're going to call it. Uh, for some reason, everything everything I look build ends up looking like a bug for some reason. But anyways, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to our blocks here, and I think I'm going to come right off of here. I'm going to go up. Probably up three. Seems like a nice round number. That's because it is. It's actually round at the top and bottom. All right, and one, two, three. I looks like I'm gonna have to sleep the night away. Uh, actually, what I should do is actually go to the slopes on that. Oh, make sure we're not hitting the cockpit there. And that, and then number eight. One there, one there. And get the right axis, of course. And then I think, I think I'm gonna have the air blades just directly above this. Now this is where the, the terminal and the key bindings comes in handy because this is actually gonna be a flyer that's gonna be fully customizable in its flight. Like, I mean, we're gonna go for full flight. I'm not gonna bother going with a roll because it's not what we're looking, trying to achieve on this. Let me see one. Okay, that's enough. Uh, the reason being is because we can have two sets of controls for every function on the air blade. So I can have not only steering, but I can have strafing as well. And that's what I want to try to do because when you're trying to load up a container to a certain spot, you want to make sure that uh, if you need to go just to the side a little bit, you know, like this, that you don't have to go forward and then back and then do like a 27 point turn just to get to where you need to be. But, uh, let me get this up finished, get the sun back up and put some air blades on and I'll bring you back. Okay, that's the last one. Now, I'm not actually going to set these up because I'm going to be setting them up manually. And uh, I'm doing that for a reason, just so I can get the, the extra control in. Now, for the claws, the claws are going to have to have a one block gap, and I didn't even think about doing this now. Oh, God, how is this going to work? Hmm. I think those are going to have to come down one more. Let me do that. Just like that, that's an easy fix. And yes, I was wrong, it was actually eight air blades, and you not six. So, the reason why these had to go down a little bit more, and I meant to put these down another block. Like that. So now for the claws. Now the reason why they had to go like that. Now I'm not going to worry too much as far as how these really look, but it's because uh, they're grabbing something that's one block wide, so they have to have one block gap in there. And I have to put this back on my hot bar because for some reason shift clicking was not actually working properly for me. That might have been my fault. Could have been an auto save too. Who knows? It happened. Oh, that's, that happened too. Okay, so we'll take that out. And then we'll go back to here. And we'll do that. And now we're going to have probably a two block, I think, on the, on the 
on the claw. Is two going to be enough? Maybe we can go one more. That way we can keep it in, inside this. At least we can keep it all compact. Well, the air blades stick out one more, but whatever. Alright, then we go back to a number eight. We'll do like this. And we'll go back down here. We'll stick a seven on the bottom. There. And then we will stick another eight here. Now, how do I want to have this? I don't want it like this. I want it like that. And that way it just looks really, looks kind of cool. But on this one here, no, the, this one here is going to be on the same side as that. This one here is going to be the opposite side. So it's going to be one of those. And basically be, be the same thing. The claw is going to come out on this side. Uh, this one here is, is going to start on this side and go out that side. So let me finish that up and then we'll start configuring everything. Okay, so there it is. It is almost looks like a crab to be honest or a flying ant or some abomination but okay so now I'm we're ready to set everything up I don't have anything actually configured as you can tell by the build division there is no directional or steering everything everything is going to be controlled by a terminal because we're going to configure everything independently now before we do that we have to rename every single one and the rename is not actually in here really oh that's not good that's no good. I was hoping that was going to be in here. I know they had to uh, take it out to add other options in here. Alright, well, let me uh, grab some deuterium. And then what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to name these all one way and and these the other, actually. I think we'll be okay. Let me uh, get some deuterium and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. There was a bit of a rainstorm and I had to sleep the night, sleep it away quickly. And I guess it's going to be another day here pretty soon. Uh, so I've got the deuterium in there. By the way, the refinery has got about six stacks of it in there right now. So <laughs> it's doing pretty good. I'm thinking about this. We might actually see if this will work. So we've got build vision on. Let's hit the right button here. So now this is something that has been a lot, a lot of confusion with a lot of people as far as setting up your vehicles. Uh, when you set up this side, and I know I'm repeating myself to a lot of people that ha have played the game, but when you set your direction, make sure the top arrow is going the direction you want to go. So the blade is going to tilt forward because that's the rotation that's going to be when you push forward. And it's going to get you to go forward. When you configure the other side, the first click, it's going to be opposite. So you have to hit it again to get it to go forward. And I just like that on all of them. And it's just the way it's set up. It's kind of kind of confusing at first until you learn, learn the, get the hang of it. But that should work. So now I'm going to set up the steering. Same thing, steering top arrow is going to be for the left. So if I push left, it's going to turn that way. Uh, other side, we have to reverse it. Like so. And then I'm going to reverse it in the back so it turns at the center of mass. And then again, we don't have to double click, we single click there. Now, the question I want to know is let's actually have a look at this terminal here. So, I want to check the key buttons. Let's see. Okay, turn left, turn right. Okay. I want to see if I could set them all to. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me try some other ones here. Yeah, so I'm going to have to find out which ones are which. And you know how I do that? We actually turned each one off. <laughs> and we go in here, we find the one that's turned off. And then we'll rename that if we can. Did they take the rename out? Really? Oh. I can't actually see it. So, yeah, I'm going to have to do it this way. So then, uh, yeah, so I'll, this side all will have to be left. 
this side I'll, I'll have to be right going left and vice versa so uh, let me see if I can figure something out here okay I got it figured out so this is W W D S so forward backward turn left turn right and then if I use the arrow keys I can strafe left and I can strafe to right and also use back and forward this way so if I can use the arrow keys for proper maneuvering and then if I go to the terminal uh, what I've had to do is basically trial and error I thought I had all the one side done right but I forgot that I got the steering reversed so basically what I had to do is I got, him, got out of the cockpit which I realized is actually facing up I will fix that in a second here uh, bas basically what I did is you know I turned one side off so then that way in the terminal I just go by what's actually turned on turned off so I know which airblades are which because I can't I should rename them in here and yeah then when I got in here and I did my test and I started doing the strafe I realized that I had them backwards so I turned the ones off and I had to switch and did it that way process of elimination and uh, yeah my keys look screwed up to me that's because that's actually the front <laughs> but anyways uh, let me fix this up uh, let me fix change that cockpit I can actually do that right now find out that, that one one piece is holding the entire thing together okay I think that's the right way yeah <laughs> that works and I left a bit of a gap yeah see so about that center of mass up forward so I want to make sure I put that right in the proper spot and then all that's left to do is to configure the claw and the claw is just a matter of whatever bindings I want if I need to use something that the air blades are on I have to make sure I turn the air blades off but I can't do that if I'm actually picking something up I'm still front heavy oh, that, oh yeah because it's post uh, that's right I forgot alright so now uh, we gotta go and wire everything up. We we'll get our build vision back on just because we need it. Uh, actually, before I forget, we'll turn everything back on. All right. And power the rotors. So now I have to figure out which one is going to be going which way. Uh, let's go ahead and. Oh yeah, that's right, I gotta actually start the rotation. Actually, I gotta do uh, key bindings. Okay, uh, on. Orders on, change the speed. And back over to the terminal. Actually, that's gonna be a tricky one to do now. Let's see if I can get it from here. Probably not. I might have to actually do it from inside the cockpit. Just because. Let's see if I can actually get a, a view of it. Alright, so rotating joint. Actually. Sorry. I was trying to think of the order I placed them. Well, I guess trial and error. Alright, uh, rotating joints. So let's go key bindings here. Uh, I think I'm going to do a start, stop, and like both start left and right. Uh, what would not be used? Hmm. Good question here. Okay. Uh, we'll do a stop, insert for a stop rotation on all three of them. Get that done. So I know it's not being used by anything I'm using, not even a game. And now it's just a matter of figuring out what's going to be left and right. Uh, I'm going to use home and end for that. So let's do home and. Actually, we'll just leave that there. Okay. And then. 
home. That one to home. I'm sure I could use the other ones too, but let's try that. Home, okay. Alright, so those two are going right. Uh, the other one's got to be switched around. So then what we do, just go down here. Uh, I'll turn that one off so then I actually know. Go back from terminal. Uh, that one is turned off, so this one's got to be switched around. That's going to be end. That's going to be home. Yes, this is how I actually do things. I always find it easier to learn things on the field while it's right in front of you. Okay, now we hop back in here. And then if I hit end, it opens up the claws. And then down our home, close them. Perfect. Now the question is, we'll actually lift up the container. Uh, let's find out. <laughs> I actually thought about building something like this a long time ago. But uh, back then, I was using hover pads and like these giant housings for motors just to do simple things like this. All right. Check the strafing. Well, it can lift up on its own, that's fine. All right, strafing works. Rotation works. So again, this is where the strafing comes in handy. And it's so much easier to line up on your loads. Now the question is, can I actually lift it? Alright, grabbed it. And I can actually lift it. And I'm bound, stuck on something. Come on. Oh, I know why. Uh, the claws are a little too much. I need to do a stop. A power end on that. Use delete, I think. I think that'll work. There's no power setting. Hmm. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Let's try something. In the name of science. Now, can anybody tell me what is causing the problem here? Why it's doing this? I'll give you a second, see if you can figure this one out. And give up. It's two against one. No. Oh. What I need to do. Set those down a little bit. So they're not overpowering the other one. And that should. Should fix it. At least you'd think it would. That's kind of why I wanted four hooks. Hmm. Okay, let's try to see if I can uncouple from this thing. that one turned off. Is that why I'm having problems now? No. Let me figure this out. Okay, I figured it out. Basically, I gotta stop it as soon as the claw closes. So maybe I'll have it a little bit slower, but it doesn't seem to want to lift it up when it is slow. But that is basically it. Now what I do have to do is I have to expand that pad and get the conveyor connector set up on the container so I can just drop them down into a, a tiny little area like that. 
but this was uh, an idea I wanted to try, and I saw it with the, the new key bindings and the power joints. This would be an excellent way to try it, but it definitely worked. Uh, this is going to be my green bin. Uh, next time I do have to go pick up biomass, at least I can go and take my container with me and ungrab all that, and off we go. But anyways, uh, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Later.